Welcome everybody to uh, the, tonight's community input meeting for uh, Eastern North Philadelphia. Of course, Eastern North Philly is a, is a very large section of the city. I'm not actually covering all of Eastern North Philly, but we're hoping to focus on uh, the boundary between the, the fifth district and the seventh district in particular, uh, and especially the, uh, the area around you know, South Kenton where uh, those, those, that boundary exists. And actually there's a, there's a you know, intersecting first boundary not too far away uh, around Northern Liberties and, and Kensington. So um, I'm, uh, my name is Pat Christmas. I'm a staff for the Committee 70. Happy to be uh, in another one of these um, community meetings where we've gotten a lot of rich uh, discussion around the communities and the district boundaries uh, across the city. Uh, and especially happy to be here with my, my friend and colleague, uh, Abu Edwards, who's been uh, in on this project uh, and has, uh, we have a lot of work to go through over the next two or three months. But Abu, let me, if I could kick it over to you for a quick intro. Uh, uh, thank you, Pat. Uh, my name is Abu Edwards. I'm a consultant with the Committee of 70. Uh, I am a Philadelphia resident, uh, committee person of the 42nd Ward, 25th Division. I've been the committee person for over 10 years. Uh, I am also the chair of the Political Action Committee for the Philadelphia Branch NAACP. Um, I have uh, served in the uh, campaign management and uh, advocacy world for about 10 years, uh, working on about four statewide campaigns. Recently, I served as the um, director of Black Male Engagement for the Biden-Harris campaign. Um, I've worked on a lot of different issues that cater towards uh, communities of color and BIPOC communities. Um, one of my passions is about education. I've never been a teacher, uh, but I believe that all organizers are teachers. Um, and I've always, um, you know, my first organized experience was me being a safety in elementary school. So that was the beginning of my leadership abilities and why I got uh, involved in this work. Uh, I went to Wilberforce University, graduated with a major in political science, uh, came back to Philadelphia and put my head down and started working on a lot of important issues. So I'm happy to be here. I am leading the community input sessions, um, organizing these. Um, it's been very difficult, especially with COVID. Um, me and Pat, decide, you know, we went over and over on should this be in person? Should this be virtual? Uh, who should we invite to these meetings, what capacity we have, what resources we have. Um, so I truly believe that with everything that we have, uh, we've done everything possible um, to make it pos uh, possible for communities to, uh, to come to the table and have this uh, diverse discussion. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you for showing up uh, on six o'clock on a Wednesday. I know that everyone and one, you know, could be out watching the game or having a good, uh, a couple of brews, but thank you so much and looking forward to engaging in this conversation. Pat. Yeah, awesome, perfect. So here, we, uh, we'll do this. I'm just actually going to pull up um, you two two slides with I think a good uh, that'll make for a good conversation starter um, about um, Eastern affiliate again, at least the, the boundary between the fifth and the seventh that we're going to be taking a, a closer look at. So actually, just bear with me for one second. I'm just going to pull up uh, two slides to get us started. So um, this is the the big question across the city of Philadelphia, right? We have these ten council districts. Of course, we have 17 council members, but only 10 who represent uh, council districts. And it will be city council uh, that draws the actual map. It'll, they'll introduce a bill. That bill will describe ward by ward, division by division, uh, where the boundaries are, and that bill has to move through council uh, like any other piece of legislation, which means. Uh, that it'll, it'll have to go to the mayor uh, who can sign it or veto it at, at some point. Um, so uh, this is not the ideal, of course, you know, you want political boundaries be, to be drawn by folks who are not running in those same districts, but this is the way it works right now. Um, but, you know, as a result of that, and uh, as a result of the fact that redistricting isn't is inherently political, uh, always has been, always will be, um, you know, we've had, we have had some very uh, gerrymandered some very crooked boundaries in the in the past, and and right before we jump into taking a look at the actual map and and a closer look at the boundaries in, in Eastern North Philly between the fifth and the seventh, um, just wanted to start by you know pointing out that the current map we have now is actually in much better shape, right? For for folks who can see the screen here, uh, the current map we have now is was drawn in 2011, right? The districts are far more compact. Uh, than, uh, than what you see on the left-hand side of the screen, the map that was drawn in 2001, uh, clearly something had gone wrong in that mapping process. Um, and essentially what happened was that uh, the Latino community, uh, we've had a large and very diverse Latino community in North Philly, of course, predominantly Eastern North Philly for a very long time. Um, you know, that community, their voting power, their political power was diluted 
by having the seventh district, which covers much of, of Eastern North Philly, um, extend deep into the Northeast, all the way up to Grant Avenue, essentially pulling into the seventh district far more white voters than you would have in the seventh district otherwise. Uh, again, diluting the voting power of the, of the Latino community that is again, mostly concentrated in Eastern North Philadelphia. So, you know, this, uh, uh, having the community cracked or split in that way uh, was harmful. Uh, and then further, the way the districts, and not, not just the seventh, but the fifth, the, uh, the seventh, the sixth even, and even a little bit, little parts of the ninth um, and then around Oxford Circle uh, and Longcrest. Um, those neighborhoods, those communities, each of them that was unnecessarily split or fractured by these boundaries was also harmed, right? Because the, you know, there, there are a lot of different factors to consider in redistricting. Of course, at the state and federal level, partisanship matters a great deal. Um, but at every level of redistricting, and especially at the local level, communities matter uh, immensely. Um, and of course, by communities, we mean neighborhoods, uh, ethnic language groups, business corridors, um, could even be larger communities, regional communities, right? South Philly, West Philly, um, far Northeast. Um, so you can see that, again, the, the map we had previously was far more gerrymandered, a lot of split communities, fractured communities. The map we have now is in much better shape. And a lot of the reason for that, in fact, the, the reason for that uh, is because of the, the very heavy advocacy and public engagement, especially in and around the Latino community. And then also a lot of hard work inside City, uh, City Hall, um, especially by uh, Councilwoman uh, Maria Canone Sanchez uh, to make that district more compact. So, you know, this is the big question, of course, right? What's the map gonna look like on the other side? Uh, it's not gonna look radically different. The cores of these districts have been the same uh, for decades, um, but what would seem to be even minor changes, changes literally on the edges, when you look at the citywide map, of course, matter a great deal uh, for the folks who live in a given area or in a given community. So that's that's why we're having all these conversations. Um, and before we, we dive into you know an interactive version of the map and really kind of take a closer look, I just wanted to go through very briefly uh, the population figures for these districts, right? Because this provides uh, a sense of where the pressures will be on the boundaries. So the, the target population for each district is about 160,000. Uh, that's about 1.6 million divided by 10. 1.6 million is the, the city's total population now, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. So the good news is that we don't actually have to have each district have uh, 160,000 people. Uh, we have a bit of a range here, uh, about 152,000 on the low range and about 168,000 on the high range. So as long as in the new map, each council district has a number of people that falls within that range, 152,000 to 168,000, uh, it should be a legally defensible map. So what you see on the right-hand side of the screen are the population figures for each district, one through 10. And there are four districts that have either too many or too few people. Uh, there are two districts that have too many people. Uh, the first districts, the first and the fifth, right? The first district is currently represented by Mark Squilla, uh, a lot of development, a lot of new uh, new residents and gentrification in parts of the parts of the first district, both in the southern portion and the northern portion. Um, so no surprise there, it's it's grown. Uh, the same thing has happened in the fifth, uh, at least the parts of the fifth, more residents, development, and gentrification. So um, both of those districts will have to lose people or actually lose divisions. They will have to transfer uh, voting divisions from one district from from their districts actually to to a neighboring one. Um, you know, again, these, these voting divisions are the same ones we use for election purposes on election day, and each one can hold, you know, anywhere from 1,000 to, to 1,500 people, maybe they, they vary in size. Uh, but the divisions are, are the building blocks uh, of, these, of these districts, which, which also means there are some limitations in where we can put the lines. If we're, you know, if we could draw the lines block by block by block, I'm sure we would probably make some different decisions. Uh, but because the divisions are set, um, and they, they can be changed, but they're not going to be changed as part of this, this process, uh, it will it create, again, create some limitations as to where the district boundaries can go. So the first and the fifth have too many people. They'll have to lose divisions, trade them to, uh, to someone else, uh, to some other district. The fourth and the eighth districts have too few people. Um, the fourth district currently represented by Curtis Jones Jr. out in West and Northwest Philly is short about 5,000 people. So it'll have to pick up divisions that, that'll give it at least 5,000 people more. And the eighth district represented currently by uh, Cindy Bass, which is a good chunk of Northwest Philly, um, Chestnut Hill, uh, Germantown, um, uh, Ogons, and, and then going, going down to the other side of, um, 
uh, Roosevelt Boulevard, Tyga, and Nagstown, and also actually extending across Broad Street and to parts of Logan and Olney um, is also short people. Now, you know, the census surely undercounted folks across the city, they, it always does. Uh, so the census found that the eighth district uh, shrank by about 500 people. It probably didn't, but that's just what the Census Bureau found, and those are the numbers we have to go off of. But uh, short story is the 8th District will also have to pick up uh, at least a couple thousand people. Uh, that'd probably be at least one to two divisions, if not if not more, uh, from neighboring districts. So you know you'll uh, you'll notice that you know with the districts we're talking about this this evening, or rather the boundary we're talking about this evening between the fifth and the seventh, uh, the fifth has too many people, right? The fifth will have to. Uh, lose divisions to a neighboring a neighboring district. The seventh district actually, on its own, is technically within that within that range, right? So the the seventh district um, actually does not have to gain or lose divisions. It could it could it could stay right where it is. But because other districts do have to change, um, and critically, uh, there are going to be you know there are community opinions about and and public opinions about how the how the boundaries should shift around. Um, you know, surely the seventh district will change as well. In, in one way or another, whether it's on the southern portion, uh, on the more the the, the eastern side and in, in the heart of Kensington, uh, or or in the lower northeast, uh, where the seventh uh, intersects with the sixth and, and the ninth. So I just I wanted to go through those figures just kind of very quickly uh, for everybody. I know we you know mostly have folks who are very familiar with the redistricting process here and and know that we have uh, these ten these ten district members and even have a sense of where the where the district boundaries are. But these these population figures again give us a sense about where the pressures and the and the pulls will be. Um, on these boundaries. So that's just kind of the, the table setter here. And what I'm gonna do now, actually I'll, I'll pause just for a minute uh, before we jump into the kind of the, the interactive map. Um, any initial kind of questions, comments, concerns, uh, insights uh, that folks would wanna add uh, real quick? Hey Pat. Oh yeah. Before we jump into the map, I know that we had a few people join. Can we kind of get a roll call on like, you know, um, where people's from so we can kind of pinpoint in the map a little bit more? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great call. Great call. Um, yeah, and what, yeah, that, yeah, we should have done that, done that at the outset. So um, we'll, we'll go all the way around the, all the way around the horn. Again, I'm, I'm Pat Christmas, uh, staff at the Committee of 70. Um, uh, but what, what I want to kick it to you and then Paul, you go, uh, Paul Drush, you go next. Abu Edwards, I am a consultant with the Committee of Seventy. All right. Just got a quick, quick intro and and, uh, and uh, you know roughly, if not specifically, kind of where you're from in the city. Oh, Paul, you're up. Paul, you're on, on mute. I'll go, Paul, Paul, I'll, I'll go, I'll go, Paul. We'll, we'll come back to you. Anyway, other folks want to sound off real quick? Just again, name and, and generally kind of where uh, where you live, where you work, or just where you're, where you're from in the city. Yeah, hey, I'll, I'll go. Uh, my name is Jacob Peck. I'm in District 5, uh, homeowner near Gerard College area. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm currently a consultant with Blue Number. And we're an NGO, and uh, we work with supply chains and other things. All right. Welcome, Jacob. Thank you. Uh, Marco Garini, I'm actually uh, with Lisa, so uh, it's a little confusing, but we're trying to uh, not have multiple audio, so um, I'm also with South Kensington Community Partners. <laughs> Welcome, Marco. And I'm a resident of the 5th. Um, this is Lisa. I, I mean, I spoke before. I live in the 5th District. Um, I'm a longtime resident of the 5th uh, the and I think previously the 7th, and um, I have a long time affiliation with South Kensington Community Partners and work with South Kensington Community Partners as well. All right, welcome, Lisa. Hi, this is Eileen. Um, I am uh, a resident of, I'm right on the border of South Kensington and Muslim, um, but uh, I'm also involved with South Kensington Community Partners. All right, terrific, welcome. And then uh, Shelby, you with us? Yeah. Oh, hmm? oh, Shelby, you said, I'm sorry. Oh, no, oh, no please. No, no, Charlene, go, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. I'm Charlene Wiltshire. I actually live in the 10th district. Uh, however, I'm an interested um, bystander, uh, follower of Fair Districts PA, and 
a member of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated um, eight member team of redistricting uh, cohort. So um, I, I, we, I've mainly been involved in US Congressional and State House and Senate redistricting, but I am very, very interested to see what's happening locally with the uh, council districts. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, and uh, Shelby, I just I just saw your audio is out, but uh, let's see. Um, uh, live close, very, very closer on the border between the fifth and the seventh, and also here with the uh, South Kensington Community Partners S SKCP rolling, uh, rolling heavy tonight. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, okay, so I'm going to um, welcome it. welcome again, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Um, what I'm going to do now is pull up uh, a map. Of the city, that's that we, that's a bit more interactive, and we can um, uh, play with a little bit more. Just bear with me for one second. Whoop. And then we're going to get ourselves oriented. And then I'd love to talk about South Kensington in particular. Here we go. Share screen. All right. So everybody should be seeing a, a map of the city, but a different map from what we saw in those slides. Um, here we go. I'm going to. All right. And full screen now. So, um, right, I'm sure everybody recognizes the general shape of the of the, the city of Philadelphia. Uh, just to get ourselves oriented, right, the the name and label of Philadelphia is right there in the in the, the um, downtown area, City Hall, right, just being at the at the middle of that intersection with with Broad running north south and Market running east west. And now we're going to zoom in a bit um, and focus on again the. The boundary between the fifth and the seventh, where we're hoping to have a bit of discussion, if if not about the boundary itself, then then you know the communities in the area and kind of what's uh, uh, you know the the issues that those communities are facing. Um, so uh, if you're if you're not able to see the map as clearly because you're if you're on a mobile device or or uh, uh, or otherwise can't see the screen, I'll just describe kind of very briefly what what we have here. So again, you know, Eastern North Philly, which is the the you know, that was the name of this particular community input meet. I know covers a, a, a large swath of the city, but we're gonna try to focus on the boundary between the fifth and the, and the seventh that starts um, at, the, uh, uh, at the railroad track and that cuts across North Philly to the, da uh, to the Northeast, uh, but runs down Sixth Street, right? Um, way down, uh, way down through North Philly, all the way to Master um, and the, the cruise, the cruise rec center. So down Sixth Street, to master right there at the at the corner of the rec center it runs east several blocks uh, until it hits american jumps up a couple blocks on american then runs east again uh on west oxford street uh a handful of blocks until it hits frankfurt right as, as the further you go east eventually you make your way into into fishtown um which we were talking about just a bit uh a couple of days ago in a, in a separate meeting so you know this when you when you pull back uh pull back a bit the screen um, again, this is this is what we've heard in, in a number of meetings. You know, folks are either familiar with, or, or or they even you know they like the cores of the districts that they're in, or they like the boundaries kind of as as they, as they are. Uh, but there are some parts of the city where, either for a political reason, uh, the, the the districts are or the district boundaries are a bit gerrymandered or a bit or a bit crooked or or strange looking, or uh, for some other reason. You know, just you know, needing to obtain a population for equality, for example, they might have a given district might have gone one way or another just to pick up divisions. But you know, this this is one of the areas where you have the seventh district go, you know, fairly far far south, uh, and then you have this this whole area between the first, the fifth, and the seventh. We have a number of different neighborhoods uh, that are that are split, uh, communities are split, including uh, including South Kensington. So I just wanted to get ourselves kind of oriented first, um, and. And at this point, uh, I would like to, to open it up to kind of anyone who's who's with us, but especially you know folks who are from uh, from the given uh, the area here, and would love to hear more about the community or communities that are that are uh, uh, around this boundary, kind of some of the the you know the issues that folks are concerned with or working on. Uh, and again, lastly, uh, to you know to the extent there are any opinions about the given district boundary, we'd love to hear that too. But for starters, it would just be really helpful for um, you know especially since we're kind of creating public record here. Uh, getting a sense of the communities on the ground. So, anyone want to kind of open the open the bidding there? Yes. 
Hey, Pat, I can say something just um, as the, um, I'm the chair of our planning and zoning committee uh, for South Kensington Community Partners. Um, so we do a lot of, you know, just the regular zoning work, um, as well as um, trying to do more kind of comprehensive planning for our neighborhood, which is from Girard uh, North to Berks and from uh, Front Street to Sixth Street. Um, so we're between the fifth and the seventh. Um, we have good relationships with both offices and, you know, love working with them. Um, but we do kind of run into a challenge, I think, pretty frequently of um, just especially that kind of comprehensive planning effort is a little disjointed. Um, I think from both the fifth and the seventh, um, we've had really exciting, interesting, you know, proposals around things like affordable housing. Um, obviously, when we're looking at remapping issues, um, issues around parking, um, you know, there's just a lot of different areas where um, the council, uh, the council person's kind of influence and what their priorities are, are something that we're really trying to work with. Um, but I think what we kind of continually run into is this um, sort of what feels like an artificial boundary across the middle section of the neighborhood that results in um, just making it really difficult to look at things in a way that feels comprehensive and that feels um, kind of connected when, um, you know, neighbors across Oxford Street are sort of faced with um, these kind of differing priorities. Um, so I think, you know, we would be able to be more effective in our kind of comprehensive planning efforts if, um, you know, we're able to be all in one uh, district and sort of be able to advocate a little bit more around our priorities, which again, the both council people are very open to, but at the end of the day, have, you know, different um, kind of areas where they concentrate and we find ourselves kind of feeling like the two sides of the neighborhood um, are under different kind of um, goals in some ways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and you said, um, at least for South Kensington community partners and, and the South Kensington community, that, that that is typically understood or is clearly understood to run up to uh, up to Burke Street, West Burks. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And then and you then could... east as far as north as front. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, within the neighborhood, I mean, you would be within your rights to refer to our neighborhood as either Old Kensington or South Kensington. Mm -hmm. So same boundaries from front to six and Gerard to Burks. Um, I would say that we and, and you and I have discussed this previously, Pat, like firmly within Eastern North Philadelphia, Kensington in the name, the, the neighborhood's a little bit of like a donut hole that's lesser known than what used to be better resource neighborhoods. So oftentimes it gets lumped into the river wards or kind of more pulled into being identified with Northern Liberties or with Fishtown. It, it certainly it has a, a a uh, trajectory, a developmental and a demographic trajectory that's similar um, to Northern Liberties, but it's very, very distinct um, from, Fish, from Fishtown. So that front street uh, boundary is a really serious one, particularly for the identity of the neighborhood, the demographics of the neighborhood, like the history and the soul of the neighborhood. So as Marco discussed, like it's, you know, as a neighborhood community interest, a place-based community of interest, we're kind of in this place where we have the challenges being between two districts, but I think we firmly feel like identified as a part of Eastern North Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And um, demographically, I mean, of course, everything is, is changing, but, you know, historically Front Street again has been kind of a hard uh, uh, line uh, east of Front Street. You would find like 90 to 99% Caucasian, um, and west of 6th Street um, was primarily a black neighborhood. I think that may be changing a little bit, but in between, um, it has been traditionally a mixed neighborhood for many, many, many years, decades. Um, so it's been a black neighborhood, a, a Puerto Rican neighborhood with a significant Arab community um, and some white people as well. And obviously we're committed in maintaining that to the extent that we can. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. And uh, again, just um, especially for for uh, the folks from reviewing this 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 discussion down down the line. So Front Street is definitely is definitely seen and felt as the uh, as the eastern side of the, the boundary for mm -hmm. you know, Kensington, Old Kensington, 
on the on the other side of that is it's just generally is or, or is known as uh, the fish town just on the other, on the other side of front yes fish town and i i believe i mean i'm not that familiar to be honest but i believe as you travel north maybe it gets in i don't know where the i i honestly don't know where the um East the East Kensington becomes East Kensington or whatever. Right. Um, and, and I should say also, though, you know, this might be a little bit more toward, I mean, that's, that's my perspective as a neighbor of somebody who's lived here for a long time and obviously does some civic stuff, but mm -hmm. for the work that South Kensington Community Partners does and the work that I'm uh, affiliated with there, um, at organizationally, the organization works um, beyond those neighborhood boundaries. So for instance, it's presently kind of really growing its um, you know, green jobs and green skills training. So it has for many years done um, community land care if people are familiar with that and now is doing um, Philadelphia TCB work. So street sweeping and that work happens um, from Front Street to 10th Street along Girard Avenue um, and it happens in uh, our neighborhood, as well as in the neighborhoods of um, Ludlow and East and West Poplar and uh, in North Square, the neighborhood um, to, the, to the north of us. And I should say we have you know, good working relationships with our uh, neighborhood organizations in Eastern North. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you all you know, brought this up because yeah, the, the South Kenyan community Boundaries. That, that's one. That's one set. But then, um, I mean, you all have an, a neck as, as well, right? That it mm -hmm. covers both both on, on both sides of Gerard. Covers much more more territory than just the uh, the, the organization boundaries proper. Could you could you just talk about those real quick, especially yeah. on, the, on the southern side of Gerard? Sure. Yeah. So um, our neck boundaries are the Oh, oh, I. Eileen, it's your, uh, I can, hey, Eileen, I can kind of barely hear you. Are you able to get closer to the phone? Hey, hey, I, I, Eileen, are you able to get just a little bit closer to the phone? Oh, or the, uh, maybe, maybe some other audio issue. Hi, sorry. Um, I'm uh, revealing that I am also at Lisa's place right now, but um, <laughs> uh, so I'll just repeat all that. Um, um, but essentially uh, what I was saying was um, our NAC boundaries expand, extend north um, to Diamond. So we cover um, uh, parts of North Square and West Kensington as well. And then um, they extend um, a little bit uh, west and south. Um, so into the neighborhoods um, that you might think of as Ludlow, but also east and west Poplar. And you'll you'll mention there's a, there's like a constellation of organizations here that uh, that probably also feel like this is a like an eastern North Philly set of communities and that that work together um, on on a on a number of issues uh, in the in the in the area. That's that's also kind of fair fair to say, both around uh, around North Square, you know, farther south in Poplar, North Square, Square, APM, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, uh, and how, I mean, how far, and that, that runs pretty far north as, as well, right? Farther north, north of Diamond, north of, of Dauphin, or, or what? Which ones? Oh, just, just some of the organizations that kind of that tend to work together on, on a number of ish, you know, issues. Oh, yeah, you know, if we pull together as Eastern North, yeah, it can run, it can run further north, it can include, um, you know, ASE, I mean, really gets into, right, APM, um, the village, you know, depends on um, what the focus is, but I know that we've been in meetings as Eastern North and, and it can include East and West Poplar as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, right. Right, 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 right. Okay, okay. Um, well, there are other, um, other thoughts, well, actually here, I guess to the extent, um, uh, I guess around North, I, I guess I'm, I'm wondering for, um, Let's see, Front Street. I guess we we you know, we covered Front Street kind of uh, that's south of Norris. Uh, I mean that becomes that becomes or is uh, you know Fish Town pretty pretty quick. Uh, I guess as you go farther up Front Street, is, is that where again kind of the uh, the understanding of, of you know South Kensington or Old Kensington versus like Kensington generally is that where it becomes a bit more a bit more blurred. I, I'm saying like as you get north to like you know Front and Norris or or Front and um, Front and Dauphin. 
Is that is that also seen as old in South Kensington, or is that seen differently, or 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 is North North Square up perhaps like North Square neighborhood? I don't feel qualified to speak to that. I don't know if anybody mm -hmm. else here does. I mean, I think that's a question for people at North Square. For me, yeah. I see it as North Square. If it's you know just me personally, um, if it's on the on the Columbia side and, or on the Cecil B. Moore side and right. uh, not the Columbia side, uh, then I see it as North Square, but I don't, um, you know, I don't know. I, I don't feel like sure, this book sure. for that. Mm -hmm. Sure, okay. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, this is, this is incredibly helpful. Other, other, you know, other, other insights, you know, we think we can add for this, uh, um, at least for this, this part of the, um, of where the fifth and the seventh kind of come together and uh, especially while we have you folks here from, from uh, uh, SKC, SKCP. I think this, this alone, I think was really instructive, especially for, again, for folks who will be watching this and they're not familiar at all, at all with the area. Uh, I think they'd have a much better sense now of kind of what's happening on the ground and what, what the sense of the community is. Um, but other th other things that folks might want to add or other questions to ask? Yeah, sure. I can talk a little bit about Yorktown 2035 RCO. Yeah, um, please. The boundaries of that is from Fifth Street to Broad Street in Gerard to Cecil B. Mm -hmm. so, so it's that Yorktown low, low area. And uh, right now, some of the concerns in, in the neighborhood, uh, the term NIMBY rings uh, pretty, uh, pretty loud in the area. There's been a lot of opposition uh, for housing development mm -hmm. um, un under the guise that it, it is student housing and the community isn't too receptive of students. Uh, then of course, looking at that Gerard corridor, uh, there was a lot of pushback from uh, council press regarding uh, keeping height restrictions that I believe was at seven stories, uh, which a lot of people believe is inhibiting the development on the corridor so that you know uh, businesses, that it's not attracting and other things like that. So that's an issue. Um, uh, but other than that, you know, we're working towards getting more housing in the area. So just pretty much informing the community about its importance. Uh, everyone needs housing and, uh, and just trying to find a middle ground. So that's, that's some of the things we're working on. Mm -hmm. Right. And the, 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 the Yorktown community was, um, uh, I mean, it, it gets, uh, it almost resembles a the, you know, like a suburban kind of neighborhood in, in, in any way, right? Right, Jacob. The, the yeah, yeah. Was, uh, was two decades ago. Yeah, part of that urban renewal. Yeah, uh, I guess you, you can see you can see the cul-de-sacs. <laughs> yeah, cul-de-sacs. Uh, yeah, big cul-de-sacs. A lot of green space. It has single-family zoning uh, currently, um, and there's a large student population because Temple University sits uh, right above it. Um, but it's diverse community. This, this uh, historically uh, black after it was uh, developed in I believe the 50s, 60s, and right now we have a large uh, uh, Chinese demographic, which I think is awesome. And we have um, uh, Caucasian. So it's a it's a nice mixture of cultures that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I understand definitely uh, a lot of questions and and. Um... The concerns about perhaps about the changes that are happening uh, farther south, or you know, well, I guess I guess both farther south and farther north, right around the around the university, so kind of on both sides. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Terrific. Terrific. Um, well, any uh, other other uh, thoughts, comments, insights? Again, this uh, this general along along this general boundary here. Uh, again, I think I think what was well shared this evening again really instructive for anyone who's going to be thinking about um, uh, how they may change is, well, either inside City Hall or, or outside. And I guess you know something I should have noted at the outset. Um, you know, to the extent folks, you know, someone may want to comment on, on this or not. But uh, you know, when we're uh, when we're looking at this particular map, right, these little purple lines, uh, these are the boundaries of the divisions, right? So each each one of these is a division. You can see they're you know about most of them several blocks long. So, you know, even if and I'm just I'm just putting, it, putting this out there as like a pure pure theoretical, um, even if West Berks, you know, was was you know widely seen like clear consensus, you know, West Berks is the best the best possible boundary here, um, at least if uh, if for example the between the, the between the fifth and the seventh, um, even if that cons if that was a clear consensus and that's what everybody wanted to advocate for, the council members were okay with it. You know, when you zoom in here, you can see the the division boundaries don't go cleanly. Uh, along Burke Street, right? I mean, even when you start at front, 
um, uh, on both sides of Burks, that's that's within one division here, and we'd have to split that particular division uh, to keep Burke Street a, a, a solid boundary between the theoretical boundary between the fifth and the seventh. You would have to do that as well between the fourth and the sixth here, like split another division. Um, so I guess I I just point that out in that. Uh, in this particular part of the city, you know, changes that people may be thinking about um, and other other parts as well. Um, you know, for better or for worse, uh, the divisions, you know, limit us a little bit in where we can where we can draw these lines. Um, and uh, surely, again, if we could draw this block by block, uh, I'm sure there are a number of different areas of the city that, that might go differently. But um, uh, this was terrific. Any any other kind of final thoughts and comments? Again, I, I think everything that was shown already has been very instructive. But anything else while we still got the map up? All righty. Oh, okay. yeah, I'll share, I'll share one last thing. Yeah, um, please. Uh, I, I had the privilege in 2020 to uh, serve as a regional technician for the Census Bureau during the Centennial Census and also a data analyst. So I'm, I'm happy to see uh, the results of the Decennial Census coming together while we uh, look at congressional redistrict redistricting nation nationwide and also in our cities as well. So I'm happy to be a part of this process. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, Jacob, that is that is really well put. Um, there were not hundreds of thousands and millions of people who had to, to help uh, execute that census across the, the country uh, over. Uh, I don't. I guess I don't know how many how many months and years. Obviously, you know, last year was an unusually challenged uh, uh, unusually challenging census year. So yeah, that that's very well put here. That if we didn't put that very very hard work in across the city across the state, uh, this would be this would certainly be a different conversation. So that point is very well very well taken. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, I think folks, that, that's it. Unless folks other have other last minute thoughts, questions, comments, insights about um, uh, the boundary in this particular part of the city. Uh, this was this was terrific. Uh, again, uh, we'll, we'll be recording this, putting this online. Um, there is uh, you know, more information and resources about the council redistricting process at, at 70.org backslash draw Philly. Um, for folks who who may want to add in more, but just you know, weren't uh, weren't able or willing to, or or uh, just didn't this evening, or folks, of course, who didn't make this particular meeting, right, register but didn't make it, uh, there's a survey as well uh, that's on that website uh, that addresses the same basic questions, right? Where the where where are the communities, and then uh, where are the where are the district boundaries? So uh, 70.org backslash draw Philly um, uh, for all the folks at home uh, who actually didn't make it make it this evening is a, is a place to go. Um, uh, Abu, is there anything else you think we need to flag for, for this evening? Or are we? I mean, I would just say this. I know that we had a small group tonight. Um, we do have about three or four more community input sessions. Um, please make sure that you go in the Committee of 70 and look at those sessions and, reg I mean, and register. Um, everyone from this call will get an email uh, with the link to this video, but also uh, with the link to the survey and the map. Um, we will send out a mass email by January to tell you uh, to let you guys know about the next steps in our mobilization tactics. Uh, once city council has released uh, their new maps, there's a period of time where we could uh, have feed, do some type of feedback uh, engagement. So right now, me and Pat is working on what does January and February look like. Um, I tell people all the time, you guys know the information. Now I'm going to charge every last one of you to go back to your civic organizations and your communities and continue to talk to people about council medical redistricting and, and have them submit their maps to their council person. The more maps these council people get, then they will understand that people are understanding what's going on behind closed doors. Um, we are just trying to make this a transparent process. We know that every suggestion is not going to happen. Um, but if we can just get a few movement um, and in certain areas where there's going to be a shift in population, um, then I think that we can all sit back and call that a win. Um, so I look forward to seeing you, seeing you guys on um, our next community input sessions. I look forward to seeing emails saying, hey, Pat or Abu, could you jump on a Zoom call because we're having a council medic redistricting in our community or for our organizations. Um, you know, this is an important uh, uh, session and um if we can if we can do everything we possibly can i, I truly believe that in january and february we will literally advocate to see fair maps um through the city of philadelphia and that everybody's voice can be represented equally and not chopped up so 
looking forward to you. Thank you so much. And um, please, I'll, I'll put my email in the chat and please reach out um, if you uh, need anything. All right. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Have a great evening.